obvious this is our first service of 2023 and i just want to take this opportunity and say happy new year to you all it is good to see you i last heard of you and last saw you last year it's been a while it's been a minute so it is good to have you here uh i am excited in my spirit and i truly believe that god will do you good this very day hallelujah praise god i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited oh le boska dia sujalahate zali mandare abasia do hojalahate bere zigia dosha mm Lendo Shatalabasia. Just kindly share the broadcast. Let somebody know uh, that we are live. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right. I don't want to take too much of your time. We just want to get straight into it. Uh, it is good to see you, Catherine. It is good to see you. Who else is here? Praise God. If I can see you, if I can't see your name, but I know you're watching, you're blessed. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Right. I don't want to take too much of your time. Like I said, we just want to get straight. Uh, happy birthday, man of God. Is Oh, okay. Is it? I don't know. Is it my birthday? Temba, it is good to see you. God bless you. I'm not sure. Uh, is it your birthday, Catherine? Happy birthday to you. Uh, praise God. I don't know. Because say the happy birthday to me. Yeah, praise God. Happy birthday. I, I received it. <laughs> Praise God. Right, let's get straight into it. Last week we started off, um, oh, this is the third week that we started off um, dealing with traditions of man. Uh, you know, we are dismantling the traditions of man for one reason. The Bible says in the book of Mark, chapter number seven, the Bible declares in the book of Mark, chapter number seven, I'm going to give you quite a lot of scriptures. Today I will be teaching. Um, I'm teaching, make sure that you have your notepads, notebooks, uh, be ready to learn. Uh, relearn and unlearn. Uh, that's why we are dealing with traditions of men. They have the Bible declares in the book of Mark chapter seven that traditions of men making the word of God of none effect through your traditions which you have delivered, which you have handed, and many such things you do. I want you to remember something. Praise God. I want you to remember something that this everything that comes, everything that comes from Jesus redemptive sacrifice has to be free everything that comes from jesus redemptive sacrifice it has to be free that's why we've been we've been dealing with the doctrine of simon praise god i hope everybody can hear me we've been dealing with this doctrine of simon for some time because it has penetrated within the church so we are dismantling it oh god i'm so excited about today glory to god so everything that comes from the redemptive sacrifice of jesus has to be free if it is not free it is not of god because the bible declares that freely you have received freely you shall give so meaning anything you have to pay for anything that you have to pay for or anything that you have to sow a seed for is not what jesus redemptive sacrifice has provided Anything that you have to pay for, anything that you have to sow a seed for, it is not the redemptive sacrifice of what Jesus provided. Are you here with me? Today I'm teaching, so make sure you've got your notebooks and notepads, right? So I want you to understand something. Look at the Bible in the book of John. John chapter number 4. Praise God. John chapter number 4. John 4 verse 14 john 4 verse 14 always remember this that anything that has been provided by this redemptive sacrifice of jesus it is free you don't have to pay for it you don't sow a seed for what he has provided through his sacrifice remember that john chapter 4 verse number 14 the bible says but whoever drinks 
of the water watch this whoever drinks of the water i will give i will give i will give whoever shall drink of the water i will give him will never thirst again the water that i will give him will become in him springing of water wailing up to eternal eternal life that word that water there it was symbolic of his spirit it was symbolic of his spirit that the water that i will give you so if if it is him that is saying i'll give you water and out of your belly this is why the bible then says out of your belly shall spring waters of living living waters shall spring out of you so that means you don't need to be moving around with bottles of water saying oh yeah there's an overflow no it says out of you meaning that the water the, the spirit is within you already he said whatever that you whoever shall drink of this water he will not be thirst again key word that i want you to understand is whoever i shall the key word is i will give Whoever I will give, he did not say whoever shall sow a seed. He said whoever I will give, meaning it's gifted, right? Meaning it's gifted. Whoever I will give, whoever I will give, 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 meaning it's gifted. So the living water that has been mentioned here, it is him that says I will give it to you. Whoever shall drink, that means you have a part to play. Your part is to, to receive and drink the water that he is giving you. So key word there is whoever I will give, meaning whoever is gifted the living waters. He did not say whoever shall sow a seed or shall pay with money. No, I will give him. That is the redemptive sacrifice of what Jesus has provided. Okay, so look at now. Acts chapter number 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Paradias Vijalamandia. And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive, watch this, and you will receive, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized. That word repent is change of mind. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive, watch this, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. It did not say you will pay for the gift of the Holy Spirit. It did not say you will sow a seed for the gift of the Holy Spirit. He says Whoever shall repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, he shall be given the gift. He shall receive, rather, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And I want you to understand something. When the Bible is saying that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit who is the giver of gifts. So all the gifts, the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of healing, the gifts of working of miracles, the gifts of interpretation of tongues, they are given unto you. By the Holy Spirit, not by sowing a seed. I want you to understand this because I really don't want you to miss this. It is good to see you, Apostle Roderick. Praise God. Prophet Doug, it is good to see you. I want you to understand something. He says, whosoever said, this is Peter speaking, said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive, and you will receive, the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the gift of Holy Spirit is provided unto you upon repentance and being baptized in the name of Jesus. So the gift of the Holy Spirit is not coming according to you sowing a seed, tapping into, uh, it, 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 with, with money into someone's anointing. No. The, the gift of the Holy Spirit is given, is made available unto you upon repentance and being baptized, being baptized in the name of Jesus. I want you to understand this and please don't miss this. There is never a time, even Jesus himself, there is never a time that he would say for you to have the gift of the Spirit, uh, for you to have the gifts of prophecy, the gifts of working of miracles, the gifts of interpretation. There is never a time Jesus himself saying that you need to sow a seed. 
But he said, when you repent and be baptized, you shall receive. Key word there, receive the gift. Gift meaning it's gifted unto you. <laughs> I know somebody does not like this, but this is the truth. This is the truth. That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that is not ashamed of the gospel, rightly dividing the word of truth. This is why we are dismantling traditions of men, because the traditions of men have brought in the doctrine of Simon, that they have removed the part where God is saying, I will gift you, I will give unto you the Holy Spirit. And the doctrine of Simon would remove the part of the gifting and replace it with the sow a seed. Bring in money for you to have what the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus has provided. This year, we will dismantle traditions of men and many shall be set free and many shall come to the knowledge of truth. Mashalibado. So the key word there is you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the key word. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right now as I'm speaking, if you have repented, okay, and have been baptized in the name of Jesus, we'll deal with baptism, water baptism, that just, you know, swimming exercise, we'll deal with it another day. But if you have done that, you have right now, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is the same gi giver of the gifts. The Holy Spirit is the giver of the gifts. The gifts of prophecy, the gifts of interpretation, the gifts of healing, the gifts of working of miracles, the gifts of interpretations. It is the Holy Spirit who is the giver of those gifts. And Jesus is saying, I have, I, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Meaning, now you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, you have access. You have access to every other spiritual gift. So there's no need for you to sow a seed. You're sowing seeds in ignorance. Because it's a doctrine of men that have introduced, the traditions of men rather, that have brought in the doctrine of Simon. We, we are dealing with this and we are going to deal with this. And many will be set free. Look at Look at uh, Acts chapter number 8 verse number 20. Acts chapter 8 verse number 20. Praise God. I know somebody is being blessed and somebody is getting angry. But just tell your neighbor that today is going to be hot like a heater. <laughs> Acts chapter number 8, verse number 20. The Bible says, but Peter said to them, may, you, may your silver. Okay, this is when, for us to understand the, the context, let's pretext, right? Pretext. Watch this. Verse number 17. No. So this is Simon. When he, even Simon himself believed and was baptized. But I want you to pay attention to verse number 16. It says, for he had not yet fallen on them. This is upon Philip had gone to Jerusalem. And they were in Jerusalem and they had that Samaria had received the word of God. So Peter and John were sent there. Okay. Peter and John were sent there. And as, as they were sent there, they realized that for nobody had yet received or the, the, the Holy Spirit had not fallen upon them. They had, not, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Verse 18 of Acts chapter 8. Now when Simon saw the Spirit was given through the laying on of hands, he offered them money. He offered them money saying, give me this power. Give me this power. So that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. You see where the doctrine of, of, of Simon was introduced within the church. Give me power. The, the, Simon saw that through the laying on of hands, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Remember the gift of the Holy Spirit, if you, you have received him, the same gift of the Holy Spirit is the giver of gifts. So now they have received. The, Simon saw that. It was through the laying on of hands. So Simon then opted and said, give me this same power. And I will give you money. Doctrine of Simon that has been introduced in the church. That for you to tap into my anointing, for you to have what I have, you have to sow a seed. The same as Simon is saying, give me money. 
Now I want you to hear what Peter then says, verse number 20. He says, but Peter said to him, may your silver perish with you because you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. Yet Jesus said, if you repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, you shall receive the gift freely. There is no sowing of seeds. There is no pain of, uh, of the gift. Yet Simon now introduces this doctrine to the church. The church now said, every time, sow a seed for this, sow a seed for anointing, sow a seed to get married, sow a seed for this, sow a seed to, to be prophetic. Yet Jesus, he said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then Peter is correcting and is rebuking Simon. So you think that the gifts of the Spirit are purchased with money. You will perish with your money. That's what Peter is saying. You will perish, your, your silver, your silver will perish with you because you thought, you thought you could obtain the gift of God with money. There is no amount of money that you can pay to obtain what the sacrificials, the redemptive sacrificial uh, of Jesus has provided. The gifts of healing that you want, the gifts of prophecy that you want, the gifts of interpretation, the gifts of uh, working of miracles, I'm here to announce to you, they are already in you. Why? Because as long as you have the Holy Spirit, who is the giver of the gifts, they are already in you. This is why Paul would say, I pray that I would come and impart upon you. That word impartation is not to put on him, but that word impartation is to activate what already is in you. That's why he prayed unto Philman and said, let the sharing of your faith become effectual. Effective, how? By acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. So the one thing that you need to acknowledge is you have the Holy Spirit in you, and it is the same Holy Spirit that is the giver of gifts. So it is not through money that you pay for, to receive the gifts of the Spirit. But the doctrine of Simon has been introduced. Simon has sold that doctrine to the church. That's why we are dismantling these traditions of man. But you cannot buy what God gives for it is freely given. Look at the Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter number 2. La Sudaria Mandia. I really want to teach. I don't want to preach. Please don't allow me. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 8. Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8. For by grace you have been saved. By grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. There is nothing that you have played. You have not played a part in you being saved. This is not your own doing. By grace we have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. Watch this. Always pay attention to the words that I'm saying. The words that the scriptures are saying, rather. The word, it is not of your doing. It is what God has gifted. Grace has been gifted unto you. Grace has been given unto you. A gift, you don't pay for it. So when somebody then tells you you need to sow a seed to enjoy the grace of God, that's fraud. It is not your own doing. It has nothing to do with your money. It has nothing to do with your ability. It has nothing to do because you are clever, you did this. And, no, it has nothing to do with you, but it has been gifted unto you. It has been gifted, Gojalabadia, gifted by God. We have been saved by grace through faith. And this is not your own doing. I want you to remove that mentality that you think that you have a part to play in your salvation. Your only part is to hear and to believe and to receive. That is your only part. The Bible says, how can they believe if they have not heard? And how can they have heard if there was no preacher to preach? So your only part to play, Kadobo Shata, your only part to play is to believe and to receive. Everything has been gifted unto you. It has been gifted. The, through grace you have been saved by faith, not by your works. But it has been gifted unto you. Watch this. He says what? It is the gift of God. A gift you don't pay for it. So how is it that you end up sowing seeds? Paying for gifts that God has gifted. That is the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus he, that he has provided for us. We are dismantling this doctrine of Simon. And many shall be set free within the body of Christ. And I know many are not happy with this message. But the truth of the matter is, I, I, I would rather stand on the truth than stand in fame. 
Lego jabada vazia. Lengro dear. Not a result of works. So that no man may boast. So now if it is a result of works, now you're thinking, yeah, because I saw the seed to a sacrificial seed. I saw the, my, this, this is why I've got the prophetic. You are boasting. That's why it is not of your works. Least you boast. But it is by his grace. <laughs> and it has been gifted for free. You can, you can be moving around and showing off the, that, uh, yeah, uh, I got, you know, you see, it's like somebody that went, you see, these are two, two different people. Let me give you two different scenarios. Somebody goes and buys a car and somebody go and is gifted the car. Do you know the one that has been, uh, that has bought the car with his own money, they, they boast. They boast, oh yeah, I worked hard. Well, this, they boast. But somebody that has been gift, gifted, they are grateful. Oh, thank you, Lord. If it had not of this gift, well, how, how could I have? Even myself, I could not even afford this new car. But it, it, you saw it worthy for, for you to, to give it to me. I am forever grateful. Two different people. The one that bought will be telling you, yeah, you work hard. You have to work hard. Yeah, I did this. I did that. I did this. So God is saying, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, they are not of your works. Least you boast. That's why we have so many people now that are boasting that I am the greatest of the prophets, I'm the greatest of the apostles, I'm the greatest of this. I'm going to deal with that. Why am I saying what I'm saying now? I'm saying it so that you'll understand what I'll be saying. Because the doctrine of Simon gave birth to the doctrine of Balaam. I'll I deal with that. And we are going to, we're going to rightly divide the word of truth together. So it is not of yourselves, but it was through grace. It was th the grace of God through faith. Faith came by you hearing and hearing what? The word of God. So you have to understand this. So by grace, you are saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. The gift of God. It has been gifted. So anyone that will, tell, or that will remove the gift inside of things and introduces money, it is not of God. It's a doctrine of Simon that has been introduced by Simon and the church has, has embraced that doctrine. That's why we are dismantling traditions of men. The gift of God. So for many of you, you have to pay money. You have to pay money to see your papas. I know what I'm talking about. You want to see the man of God? Or you have to sow a seed? I don't remember the time that the disciples went. They wanted to see uh, uh, even the, 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 the congregants, whether it's in Corinth, Ephesus, wherever. There was never a time that the disciples would charge congregants rather disciples or members to come and see the apostles but we have now in this in this generation for you to see your own papas that you claim my papa you have to sow a seed doctrine of simon you have to sow a seed look at romans i want you to see something oh god help me i don't know whether i'm gonna finish this message but i think i'm gonna try my level best uh, Romans chapter 8 verse 32 Romans chapter 8 verse 32 Romans chapter 8 verse 32 The Bible declares and says He who did not spare his son He gave him up for us Oh, How will he not also with him Graciously give us all things He did not spare his son He gave him up for us oh, I've, I've taught you about the giving up That the giving up he betrayed because he gave him up to his enemy. His enemy, the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, the last enemy that shall be dealt with is death. So God betrayed his son to his enemy, death. He said he did not spare his son. He gave him up. That word gave him up is betrayal. He betrayed him to his enemy. Because death is the enemy. So he said he, he did not spare his son. He gave him up for us. Oh, how much more will he not also graciously give us all things? Remember, nothing is as precious as his son. Nothing is as precious as his son, but he did not spare him. 
he gave him up for us all. Yet there is nothing that is so special to him as his son. So the day of the doctrine of Simon is over today. I'm here to announce this. The gospel is not do this for God to do that. That is not the gospel. That is not the gospel. Do this for God to do that. It is not the gospel. That is fraud. The gospel, it is what Jesus has provided for us. What is the gospel? The good news. What is the good news? The death, the burial, and the resurrection. He died your death. That is the good news. So the gospel is not do this for God to do that. All you are required to do in the gospel is to believe and to receive. It is given by Jesus. It has no conditions attached. Remember, the spirit is given. The spirit was given after Jesus had paid the price. The Spirit was given after Jesus had paid the price. So the gift of the Holy Spirit, it came upon Jesus paying the price. And apparently, he did not pay the price. He was the price. So the gift of the Holy Spirit came upon his redemptive sacrifice, upon him being the price, paying the price. Watch this. Oh, God help me. So it has nothing to do with you sowing a seed. The spirit was given upon his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the price. He paid the price, for he is the price. Look at uh, Acts chapter 2. My God, you people, Lebo Shatayama. Acts chapter 2, verse 32. Acts chapter 2, verse 32. Praise God. Somebody is being liberated. You are being liberated. Stop sowing seeds. For grace, for peace, for the gifts of the Spirit, for prophecy. You want to prophesy, sow a seed. Stop that. That's the doctrine of Simon. The gifts have been gifted. Watch this. Stay there. Look at the Bible in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 32. This Jesus, Kayaba Sujalamandia, this Jesus God raised up. And of all that we owe are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit. Having received from the Father, <laughs> not from Papa, <laughs> Papa, <laughs> not from Papa, from the Father. Having received from the Father, what was it that he received? The promise of the Holy Spirit. He has poured out that, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. Now, stay there. You understand that? It has been given by the Father. Okay? The promise of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the giver of the gifts. What? Watch this. Let's go to John. John 20. John 20. I'll give you a lot of scriptures because it's health for your spirit. John 20. Verse 22, watch this. The Bible then says, And he said, and he had said this, and he had said this. This is upon his, his resurrection. After he had resurrected. Okay? He, and he said this, and he had said this. He breathed on them and said to them. He did not say, sow a seed. He did not say, sow a seed. Understand this. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. He did not say, So a seed for, for you to receive the Holy Spirit. He said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And he said, Receive. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Look at 1 Corinthians. Oh, God, help me. <laughs> God, help me. 1 Corinthians. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Verse 1 to 4. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. 
You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Ghost. Now, there are varieties of gifts. Watch this. Please pay attention. There are varieties of gifts, but by the same Spirit. And that same Spirit is the Holy Spirit, the one that you have received. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. The Holy Spirit is the giver of gifts, not by sowing seeds. Or to tap into what the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus has provided. He brought upon us his resurrection. It was upon his resurrection that we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Upon his resurrection. That's when we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Before his resurrection, he was telling them, no, the, the Spirit of God will come upon you. Even Joel had prophesied, in the last days I shall pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, watch this, in the last days, oh God help me, Lasutagabato. in the last days I shall pour out, I shall, I shall, who is going to pour out? Jehovah God. Who is going to pour out? God himself is going to pour out his Spirit upon all flesh. That has been fulfilled. The promise has been given. The Holy Spirit upon his resurrection. He said in Joel 2.28. In the last days I shall pour out my spirit. I shall pour out my spirit. Not Papa's spirit. But I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters. They shall prophesy. The older shall see visions. They shall dream dreams. But who is making it all possible for you to prophesy, to see visions, and to dream dreams? It is Jehovah God. Why is it him? Why is it God saying that? Because he said, in the last days I shall pour out my spirit. Are we in the last days? Yes. Has the spirit been poured? The spirit of God is in us. Upon you receiving Jesus, you have received the Holy Ghost. Upon you repenting and being baptized in Jesus, you have received the Holy Spirit. So that has been fulfilled. That prophecy has been fulfilled. Kayaba Soja. That in the last days I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. People like Jew, people like Gail, people like uh, Catherine, they shall prophesy. Not their own doing, but my doing because of what my son has, 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 has paid. For my son was the sacrificial lamb. He paid the price that your money could not pay. He said, in the last days, Prince Joseph, Kayabosha, shall see visions, shall dream dreams. Why? Because I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Are you flesh? Yes. The spirit has been poured upon you. I will pour out my spirit. He did not say you shall sow a seed for the spirit of God to come upon you. He did not say you shall sow a seed to tap into a, a man's anointing. He did not say you shall sow a seed to tap into a man's grace. He said, I, Jehovah God, the Lord your God, and I change not. I am not man that I would lie, nor son of man that would repent. I, Jehovah God, El Elyon. Elohim, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. Has that been fulfilled? Yes, it has been fulfilled upon his death, his burial, and his resurrection. The gift of the spirit has been given unto us. The promise has been given unto us. This is what Jesus brought unto us. But the doctrine of Simon... The doctrine of Simon will tell you that you need to sow a seed to tap into my power. The doctrine of Simon will say you need to tap. You sow a seed to tap into my power. You sow a seed to tap into my anointing. You sow a seed to tap into healing that he has paid for. By his stripes we are healed. And you have to sow a seed for healing. Or you need healing, you need to sow a sacrificial seed. For God will move with, with, with your... Yet it was upon the cross that he took away our iniquities. He took away our infirmities. He took away Kapatosha, our sicknesses. He took them away. And somebody will come and tell you for you to receive healing, you need to sow a seed. 
Oh, God, help them. I came across, oh, my God. I came across um, a, a video. It's, it's there on, uh, on uh, whatever, social media. It's there. Of a lady. Apparently, it's a lady. I don't know whether she's a prophetess or whatever. I don't know. I, I don't want to undermine her. But I'm just going to talk about one or two things. So I came across this lady. I think it was New Year's Eve. New Year's. I think New Year's. And apparently, uh, she was saying to people that you need to sow a seed of $2,023 for God to protect you in this year. My question is, so if I don't have $2,023, God will not protect me. You see what this doctrine of Simon does? It, re it removes what Christ has already offered. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Meaning shall abide under the covering. So who is protecting you? God. But the doctrine of Simon will remove God from being your protector and it introduces the doctrine of Mammon. Said you need to sow a seed of $2,023 for God to protect you this year. And these people, they'll come and they'll stand there and they'll even have shed tears. Said, oh, this is what God is telling me in this year. <laughs> they become emotional. These are motivational speakers. They become emotional. Why? To try and lure people. Said, this year God told me, you have to sow a seed of 2023 for God to protect you. They are removing God from being your protector and they are introducing mammon. Money to protect you. Listen, money could not protect them in the Old Testament. Even in the Old Testament, they had serious money. They had serious wealth, but their money could not protect them. Even the, 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 the sacrifice Official uh, gods that they sacrifice, it would only protect them for only a year. But it was Jesus, the Lamb of God, the ultimate sacrifice. And you are removing God from the equation of being your protector, and you are introducing mammon, money. Said, so saw a seed for $2,023. So, what happens to those that don't have it? This is why people end up selling cars, send, selling their houses. People end up selling, uh, taking credit cards. Why? Because they want protection. Because the man of God, the woman of God has declared that God is speaking. Listen, I'm here to announce. God is not speaking to you. You're hearing nothing. You're a vain bubbler. Today is going to be hot like a heater. We are tired of these doctrines of men that have made the word of God of none effect. Introducing the doctrine of Simon that you need to. Simon says, let, let, let me tap into this power. I will give you money. Sow a seed for 2023 for God to protect you in 2023. Hello. Daylight robbery. Removing God from the equation. Introducing Mammon. Ha. But the doctrine of Simon will tell you that you need to tap into my anointing to receive healing. You need to tap, you need to sow a seed to receive healing. Should I sow a seed for healing? Yet yeah, the Bible says Jesus went about healing everyone, healing every disease. He was, he went about, there was never a time, even the woman with the issue of blood. He never said, hey, woman, woman, uh, you need healing. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Said, oh, uh, man of God. I've, I've, I've traveled, I've been to every doctor, I've been to this one, I've been to this one. Oh God, hey, no. oh, Jesus, what do I do? Jesus did not say, um, uh, my daughter, yeah, this one is serious. This issue of blood, ah, is serious. You need to sow a seed, ah, it's serious. Serious, you need to sow a seed for, you to, for, for God to move. Ah, hey, for God to move, sow a seed. Where was your seed? When you, you could not pay for your sins. Where were, where were your seeds? Where was your money? Peter said you will perish with your silver. You think the things of God, the gifts of God are purchased by money. The woman with the issue of blood. Jesus did not say, so I seed my daughter. 
Sow a seed. You need to sow a seed for your healing. No. The Bible says she believed. And she received. She touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus said, I have felt power. Ah, the disciples. Oh, yeah. How can you say you have felt power? There's too many people here. Yeah, how can you? But there was never a time said sow a seed. But the doctrine of Simon will tell you, you need healing, sow a seed. For healing, sow a seed. For healing, sow a seed. What Jesus paid on the cross. Upon his death, his burial and resurrection. And you're telling people now to sow a seed for what he has offered. What he has done for us. He took away our iniquities. He took away our transgressions. By his stripes we are healed. And you tell people to sow now a seed for that what he has provided uh, through his redemptive sacrifice. Alabasa. This is the end of the doctrine of Zion. We are dismantling traditions of men. <laughs> sow a seed. Sow a seed. But I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something, all right? What I'm telling you, this is the truth of the matter, okay? This is the gospel. The gospel is not what you can do for God to do. The gospel is what he has provided. All you need to do is receive what he has provided. So I want you to understand this. The true worth of a minister, the true worth of a minister is not the car that he drives, is not the house that he lives in. <laughs> the true worth of a minister is the ability to communicate doctrine. The true worth of a minister is not the car that he drives, it's not the house that he lives, it's not the suit that he wears, it's not, but it is the ability to communicate doctrine. Look at the Bible in the book of 1 Timothy. Look at the Bible in the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter number 5, verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, let the elders who rule with considered, let the elders who rule well be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Who labor in preaching and teaching, not labor in miracles, labor in this, no, in teaching. In teaching, not those who labor in miracles. He did not say that. He says in teaching and preaching. So if, 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 if you measure ministry by material things, you are carnal. You're carnal. Watch this. Why am I saying what I'm saying? Don't worry. Because I, I told you that the doctrine of Simon, it introduces, it gives birth to the doctrine of Balaam. So this is why I'm saying what I am saying for you to understand this. Watch this. Because many think, many think that gain, gain is godliness. You hear people say, oh, don't listen to him. What has he achieved? Hey, what has he achieved? What does he have? I know. It's something that you always hear. And maybe you've been hearing this. Many people think that gain is godliness. Now watch this. First Timothy. Today, today you will be liberated. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. Watch this. The Bible says, but godliness without contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. Okay? With these we will be content. Watch this. Yeah? What godliness is, that godliness with contentment is great gain. And you are told because I don't, I don't have a, I don't know, a Rolls Royce or whatever. I am judged based on that. That is being carnal. A true minister is not measured by material things. 
A true minister is measured by the ability of communicating doctrine. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Look at verse number 7 of that verse. It says, for we, have, we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. So we brought nothing. We cannot take nothing. Watch this. Verse 8. But if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. Many people right now, you can't even sleep. You're going through self-afflicted depression because you're told that you need to be driving a Mercedes. You need to be wearing like this. And because you're not wearing that, you have brought about depression. Yet the Bible is saying was, but if we have food and clothing, it doesn't need to be a, a, a big label, a big brand. Let, I'm helping somebody here. Don't overdo things trying to impress people. You end up going to borrow money for you. You want to wear the latest that they are wearing so that you fit in. Carnality. Watch this. Look at verse 10. It says, but verse 9, but those who desire to, to be rich, those who desire to be rich fall into temptation. Into a snare into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It did not say the money is evil, but the love of it. It is what you will do to have it. I will have it. It is what you will do. It's not like money is evil. No, it is the love of it. What you will do to have it. Palasijalamahandia. So, now watch this. Pay attention. So when greed now, when greed overtakes you, when greed overtakes you, you won't be content. When greed overtakes you, you won't be content. Like I said, there's too much depression amongst believers because of greed. Greed has taken over the church. Decorated in the term of prosperity. Greed has been decorated as prosperity. Many of you, you value men of God based on material things. Well, uh, you are more than carnal than the Galatians, than the foolish Galatians. This is why you end up now. You end up selling your homes. You end up selling your cars. You send up to cars to sow sacrificial seeds in the name of tapping into my grace of prosperity. Greed. There's no contentment. You're not happy with what you have. Am I saying be, be comfortable with what you have? No, appreciate what you have. If you can push and work hard to become better, that's it. God does not multiply money, by the way. You have to work hard. You work for it. All this, yeah, receive money, I receive. And then you walk around, money in my left, money in my right, money in my pocket, money in my this, you get home, there's no money. <laughs> you. you don't work like that. Yet you have tapped you have sown a seed for this and for money but it does not work like that am i teaching good here right we are we are dealing with the doctrine of simon which gives birth why am i saying all this because it gives birth to the doctrine of balaam you will understand in a few minutes so the doctrine of simon has given birth to the doctrine of balaam now, look at Revelations. Look at Revelations. Revelations chapter number 2. Are you here? Revelations chapter number 2. Revelations 2. Verse 12. Revelations 2 verse 12. <clears throat> Are you still here? Praise God. And the angel of the Lord, and the angel of the church in Pergamon, Right, the words of him who has the sharp two-edged sword. 
I know where you dwell. Please listen very carefully. I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Yet you hold fast my name, and you did not deny my faith. Even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have, I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel. Right, I want you to understand something. He's writing a letter. Oh my God, this is, this is, let me minister to somebody right now. He's writing a letter. He said, I know what you are going through. Oh my God, help me. Lord Sabia Guzalamandi. I know what you're going through. You, you sit where Satan is, you, where you are. Everything that you are going through, I have seen it. 2022, you lost your loved ones. 2022, you lost, you, you lost your job. You lost your marriage. Did not work out. You lost so many things that you lost. I, 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 I understand what you're going through. I understand what you went through, oh God. I understand. And I commend you. Because with everything that you have gone through, with every battle that you have gone through, with every challenge that you have gone through, with every affliction that you have gone through, with every arrow that has been uh, thrown against you, you have kept the faith. Irregardless of everybody saying, no, leave this God, leave him. Look at what you're going through. Look at what you're going through. You did not lose your faith. He says, I commend you. But I only have one problem with you. You have allowed the doctrine of Balaam in the church. Everything that you have gone through, I have seen what you have gone through. They have ganged upon you, against you rather. They were planning for your downfall. You lost everything. But you kept your faith. For everybody that has gone through that season, I am here to announce to you that the Bible declares, and it says, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. After you have suffered a little while, I, the Lord your God, the God of grace, I will establish you, I will settle you, I will live. I don't know who I'm speaking to. I don't know what you have lost. I don't know what you have gone through. I, I'm here to declare your health is being restored. Saith the Lord, I will restore unto you. I will establish you. I will settle you, saith the Lord, after you have suffered a little while. So after the suffering that you have gone through, the Bible says, but you, you have kept the faith. You have kept the faith. You did not lose your faith. I commend you for that. But I only have one problem with you. There's only one problem with you. You have allowed the doctrine of Balaam in the church. He said, I, Ali Bosha, watch this. He says, but I have a few things against you. Everything else, I commend you. You held it together. You were crying, but nobody would notice that you were crying. You went through pains that even nobody, even if you were to share with somebody, they would not even believe you. But you kept on crying and trusting God. And you kept your faith. You said, shoes or no shoes, I will still worship the Lord. Car or no car, I will still worship the Lord. You held your faith together. You held it together. After all you suffered, after all you went through. And then the Lord is saying, with all that, I will establish you, I will restore you, and I will settle you. That saith the Lord. The years that the Kenkawem ate, Kabato Shalamandi, I will restore. For you have kept the faith. You were not moved. You kept trusting in God. The Bible declares, they that look unto him, they are radiant. Their faces will never be covered with shame. After all that you have gone through, and then he says, but I have a few concerns. I have a few problems with you. I have a few things against you. You have, 
you have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block. The concern of the Lord was the doctrine of Balaam, meaning the teaching of Balaam. These doctrines have now been introduced in the church. And God says, I hate it. I hate it. Remember, these doctrines, they came from false teachers. These doctrines, they came from false teachers. Right. A false teacher. Let me help somebody here. You said, oh, so how do you know that it's a false teacher? This is a new, no, no, not a problem. Let me help somebody. A false teacher is seen by what he says. A false teacher or a false preacher is a man that will twist the scriptures to say what the scriptures are not saying. False teachers are not known by miracles, for miracles are not exclusive to believers. Miracles are not exclusive to believers. So a false teacher is seen by what he says. They twist scriptures to say what they want it to say and say and not say what the scriptures are saying. So here in Revelation he said, after you have gone all this that you have gone through, you kept on standing on me because I am your rock. Christ our solid rock. We stand. Winds came. Storms came. But you kept holding on. And he's saying, I commend you for that. But I have a few problems with you. You have allowed the doctrine of Balaam in the church. The teaching of Balaam. That's why miracles are not exclusive to believers. Now, why am I saying this? I am saying this to say this. My God, Liba Rosia, I hope you are still here with me. That's why there is too many fabrications and staged miracles. Look at Matthew. Matthew 16. Matthew 16 verse 4. Matthew chapter 16 verse 4. Matthew 16 verse number 4. Matthew 16 verse number 4. Are you still here? Praise God. Matthew 16, verse number 4. The Bible says, An evil generation, an evil and adulterous generation, seeks for a sign, but no sign shall be given unto it, except of Jonah. Why Jonah? The death, the burial, and the resurrection. So an evil generation seeks for signs. No wonder why there's too many staged, managed miracles, staged signs, false prophecies, false miracles. I came across another clip again. I came across another clip of um, another gentleman. I think he was praying for people, and um, I think there were, I think, about three or four people that had, that were set in wheelchairs. I mean, the video is there on social media. And uh, all of a sudden, he says, "Oh no, no, the grace for healing has just departed. I can't heal these people." That, and I'm like, "What?" So the grace just departs like that. I said, "I can't heal this." Yet the Bible says Jesus went about healing all diseases all so but i was wondering now so what so what happened you know so that the grace just left you for healing yet there are three four people that are in wheelchairs i'm like whoa but my question was are these people the the ones that are real in wheelchairs or the grace just left anyway that one is not for me i'm just saying i just came across it so you know it just puzzled me and i'm saying it because of what I'm saying. And adulterers and evil generation, they seek for signs. But none shall be given. So a believer, watch this, understand this. Understand this. A believer is a supernatural person. A believer. You. You are a supernatural person. And miracles to you as a believer, they are natural. Your life is a miracle. Your life is a living testimony. Why? Because you are a believer and a believer is a, is a supernatural being. So miracles to a believer, they are natural. So when you hear the true message, 
when you hear the true message there is a witness in you right now there is a witness in you that is testifying that what i'm saying is the truth there is a witness in you that is testifying that what i'm saying is the truth so after you hear such a message kabadoja you will not want to set you will not want to settle for motivational sermons Motivational speech, motivational this, sermons, motivating. So now, your question now is, what then is the doctrine of Balaam? That's your question, I know. You're like, also, you said the doctrine of Simon gives birth to the doctrine of Balaam. So now your question is, what then is the doctrine of Balaam? Right, let's look at the way, you know, I have taught about first mention, where it was mentioned first. Let's go to Revelations. Let, let's go to Revelations first. Revelations chapter 2, verse 14. Revelations 2, verse 14. It says what? But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel, so that they might eat food sacrificed to idols and practice sexual immorality. That word stumbling block, that word there, stumbling block, it means a trap. Yeah? Stumbling block, it means a trap. Now, let's look, like I said, we always do what we call the law of first mention. Let's look at where it was mentioned first about the doctrine of Balaam. We go to the book of what? Numbers. Look at the Bible in the book of Numbers 25, verse 1 to 3. Numbers 25, verse 1 to 3. While Israel lived in, in, in Shittim, the people began to war <coughs> with the daughters of Moab. These invited the people to... To the sacrifices of their gods and the people ate and bowed down to their gods so israel yoked himself to baal of power and the anger of the lord was kindled against israel and the lord said to moses take all the chiefs of the people and hang them in the sun before the lord that the fierce anger of the lord may turn away from israel right that's that's the history of the council of balaam that's the history of the council of Balaam. Look at uh, Numbers. Stay in Numbers. Stay in Numbers 31. <clears throat> numbers 31 verse 16. Numbers 31 verse 16. Numbers 31 verse number 16. Praise God. The Bible says, Behold, these on Balaam's advice caused the people of Israel to act treacherously against the Lord in, in the indecent of power. And so the plague came among the congregation of the Lord right now let's go to second timothy <clears throat> second timothy chapter 2 verse 14 i'll give you a lot of scriptures healthy for your spirit second timothy chapter 2 verse 14 praise god the bible says they have eyes full of adultery insatiable of for sin they entice unsteady souls they have hearts trained in greed they have hearts trained where in greed Accursed children, forsaking the right way, they have gone astray. They have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Boa, who loved, watch this, who loved gain, who loved gain from wrongdoing. Balaam loved gain from wrongdoing. Watch this. Key word there is their heart. The, the hearts, if they have exercised covetous practices. Look at Jude chapter 1 and then we get into it. Jude chapter number 1 verse 11. Jude 1 11. Woe to them, for they walked in the way of Cain and abandoned themselves for the sake of gain, for the sake of gain to Balaam's error and perished in Korah's rebellion. Key word is they run greedily for a reward they run for a reward yet the bible says they will do anything to have a reward even in doing the wrong because they are greedy they will do whatever they can whether it is wrong like telling you to sow a seed of $2,023 for God to protect you. It is out of greed. They will do everything wrong in order to gain a reward. 
So the doctrine of Balaam is a teaching in the local church. It's a teaching that inspires believers to covetousness and greed. Which then makes them unstable. Messages like, I will make it, I will make it, I will make it, no matter what, I will make it. Covetousness and greed. I will be the first, the richest man on earth. I will be this. Messages that are materialistic. That is the doctrine of Balaam. Messages that are materialistic. How to make it. Steps to success. Are we saying we should not make it? We should. They, I have no problem with people uh, progressing and prospering. I have no problem with that. Because it is the desire of God that all men prosper. Be in good health. It is his will. I have no problem with that. But that is not the message. That is not the message. Balaam loved gain. Even you would go as far as gain from wrongdoings. He would do whatever he would do. Why? Because he had seen the concept of Simon. That, ah, you know what? I can get power, money, I'll use. So they would do anything to gain. A reward greedy and covetousness the doctrine of balaam messages that are that inspire believers not to be content am i saying don't inspire to do well no no, no. listen I, i'm doing well i do business i know somebody came up and said yeah, so why are you advertising your book here i know somebody on um i think it was youtube he saw this you know i normally put an advert of my book it's my business I'm not saying sow a seed in this book and you receive power. No, no, no. I'm just saying, listen, this is a book I wrote that I got inspiration from the Holy Spirit. This book, if you read it, it will empower you. The book, the information that is in there, it will empower you. But the information is free. But the means of you getting the book is not free because I had to pay a, to get the book published. I had to pay people that would do design. I had to pay. So at the end of the day, the same way with your own Bible. The only place you can get a Bible for free is in prison. They'll give you a Bible. And that in prison, you can't take it home. So the gospel is free. But the means of the gospel is not free. So somebody was angry, said, why are you advertising your book? So you, you are stealing money from people. If you have followed me for I don't know how long, there is never a day that I have come out here and asked you for money. Am I saying I don't want money? Oh, I want it. But I would not manipulate you. If it is to give, I'll say, guys, listen, those that want to just give, just give. For the, we are doing this, this, and that, and this is what we want to do. If you want to just bless us, just do that. But I would not come and say, God said. Oh, this year, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, a... <laughs> I'll deal with that in a few minutes. So the doctrine of Balaam, it's a doctrine that is birthed out of greed and covetousness. No matter what, I have to make it. This is why you'd see brothers and sisters in church, they don't talk anymore. Because they have duped each other. Because I have to just make it. I have to make it. Covetousness. Messages that inspire greed and covetousness. That's the doctrine of Balaam. That's why many of you, you cannot even come to church unless it's a breakthrough service. If it's not a breakthrough service, you will not come. That's why you see, have you noticed this? Here on Facebook, social media rather, I would say social media. Here on social media, if I had put a title to say, if I see your name, I will prophesy. I've seen people do that. There will be... Me, thousands of people watching why prophesy to me i want to hear i want to hear yet you see it's people that have not been taught well the ability for you to hear from god is within you you have that ability but people want a breakthrough ah, 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 ah. anointing service oh 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 oh, 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 oh. it'd be like this so people will not come to church unless if it is a breakthrough service Messages that inspire believers not to be content. Messages that inspire believers to be greedy. I know somebody doesn't like it. It's fine. It's the truth. 
if it's not breakthrough service, I'm not coming. Messages that will make you feel like God is not with you. Many of you, you would feel like right now as I'm speaking, this is truth. Many of you, you feel like God is not with you, is not, is not with you because you don't have a certain car. You don't have a certain house. You don't have a certain this. These are messages that make you feel like God is not with you because you don't have certain things. This is a doctrine of Balaam. Greed and covetousness. Ah, I can't. Ah, why? God is the, the God does not love me. God does not love me. How do you know that God does not love you? Ah, I, uh, my, my neighbor just bought a, a new car. Me, I don't. Ah, God does not. You see yourself. You're not content. Doctrine of Balaam, covetousness and greed, and they want to make it by all means. Ah, God does not love me. God hates me. So the question is, the mission of the church, the question that you hear is many people talk about. You know, I've, I've heard this a lot of times. Somebody comes and said, oh, God told me that in this year. Well, you've been seeing that. Oh, yeah, this is the year of whatever, whatever. Said so God told me that I need to raise uh, millionaires. God said I need to raise millionaires. Are we saying we should not have millionaires in the body of Christ? No, we need more millionaires in the body of Christ so that the gospel can go forward. But is that the message? That's not the message. I need to, God said I need to raise millionaires and then they'll, they'll come up with whatever. But I have a question. I have a question. Looking from Genesis to Revelation, from Genesis to Revelation, I've never seen a, a, a verse that says God wants to raise millionaires. I've never seen a verse. I'm not saying it's not there. Maybe I don't know the different Bibles. I've never seen a verse. But I've seen a verse that says pastors should equip saints for the work of ministry. I've seen a verse. So we are here to raise an army of God that will preach the gospel of Christ. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. For it is the will of the Father that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. So, we are preaching the gospel. I, I pray that God will raise more ministers of the gospel that will stand in the truth, that will not go for fame. I know of a lot of people, young preachers, that have departed from preaching the truth because they want fame, they want association, they want to be uh, known with this man and this one. The question is, who has bewitched you? So the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. So we are saying, we are not saying don't be millionaires. No, you should be. But that is not the message. But the doctrine of Balaam makes the church to focus on materials, materialistic things, materialistic gospel. That's the doctrine of Balaam. Believers are told, give money, and when you give money, they will prosper. Ah. <laughs> you, uh, how much have you been given and your life is still the same way? Even worse, because you are in debt now. You have used all credit cards. You have sold this. Now, even in your own family, you don't even talk to your brothers. You don't talk to your sisters because you borrowed money from them. Because you were told that when you give the sacrificial seed within 20 days, 21 days. They like days. Oh, 21 days. You will be a millionaire. Up until today, you are not. You are not. So the doctrine of Balaam is a doctrine of that is um birth covetousness and greed if you want to make money let me tell you a secret are you are you here let me tell you a secret okay please don't tell anyone this secret it's just for you that are watching if you want to make money here's a secret yeah if you want to make money in this life get a job 
or do business. All this waiting for you sow a seed and then God will multiply. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Get a job or do business. If you want to make money. All this sow a seed and then... <clears throat> see, scripture has been manipulated. So I want you to pay attention now. God does not give money. God does not give you money. Oh, I know somebody said, what? Yes. Stay there and listen. Listen. If you fail to embrace knowledge, ignorance will undress you in public. God does not give you money. Ah, uh, man of God, so what are you saying? That God does not give us money. Yes, God does not give you money. Do you know what God gives you? God gives you ideas and wisdom. Watch this. Watch this. Right now you're watching this broadcast. Was it God that made that, I don't know, device that you're using? Did God make that device or is it a phone that you're using or uh, is it a tablet or computer or maybe you've put me on, a, on your TV, you've connected me and you're watching me on big screen? Whatever gadget that you're using, was it God that created that? No. Who created that? You did. How did you do it? You got wisdom and ideas. So God does not give you money. He gives you ideas. Because watch this. Everything concerning us, whether godliness, has been given already. The ground that you have now, right now, the ground, it is everything that you ever need. Everything that you ever need in this world. We have been given already. All you need to do is ideas and wisdom. And take that which, even where you are set, I don't know, for some I know I can see two people that are sleeping on their bed. God did not create that bed. It's someone that created, it's you that created the bed. Wow, idea. You saw, you saw that if I sleep like this, it's painful. But if I put cushion, then you started off with the cushion. Oh, then you got another idea. So God does not multiply money. Don't let anybody lie to you. Don't let anybody lie to you. God does not multiply money. That is a doctrine of Balaam, of greed, which was introduced by the doctrine of Simon. That if you want to tap into the gifts of the spirit, you need to pay money, sow a seed. God does not multiply money. He gives you ideas. He gives you ideas. He gives you ideas. So if any preacher that says, give money and I will multiply it, is a criminal. Look at 2 Thessalonians. And then I close. I think let me close with 2 Thessalonians. So that I, I finish this thing. Second Thessalonians. Verse 3. Chapter 3 rather. Verse number 10. The Bible says. For even when we were with you. We would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work. If anyone is not willing to work. Let him not eat. Ah. It's in your Bible. But you are told, ah, no, no, no. So some of you, you just go to church. And then your papa said, yeah, you, you receive this anointing for millionaires. You were told this 20 years ago. Today, you are still as broke as the Ten Commandments when Moses broke them. Because you think you just walk in any building and you just say, I've got papa's anointing. You just put it in your face and they put, ah, uh, you... It don't work like that. That's the doctrine of Balaam. If anyone will not work, the Bible says, that person should not eat. He did not say if anyone will not, will not fast. Mm -mm. You're busy fasting while others are in the marketplace. You're busy. I'm fasting. The anointing of my papa. The anointing of whatever, whatever. The anointing of this. I've got this oil. I've got this bottle. You're busy fasting there. Everybody else is at the marketplace working. Yet the Bible says, if you will not work, you should not eat. It's in your Bible. But you are told that, ah, don't worry. Just sow a seed and money will multiply. You become a millionaire. <laughs> doctrine of Balaam. Don't let the doctrines of men destroy your future. You hear them say, 
I see 100 millionaires. I see 100 millionaires right now, right now, right now, right now. I see 100 millionaires and I need, I just need 10 people. I just need 100 people, 100 people on this broadcast. I see 100 millionaires. I just need 100 million to sow a seed, to sow a seed and they'll, they'll become millionaires. 100 people. So what about the other ones that are watching that don't have, so they are not, you're not seeing them. You see, the doctrine of Balaam the doctrine of greed and covetousness that they will do anything to milk you right now i'm seeing 100 people 100 i'm seeing millionaires here right now right now right now yes yes i'm seeing if you're the one type amen type uh <laughs> and you you like typing amen to nonsense like that <laughs> sorry seed sorry seed i'm seeing 100 people 100 people sorry seed I remember I, I, again i came across <laughs> another clip again you know social media is, is, is very entertaining at times i saw another clip and this man came and said there are people here my god my god my god i'm seeing uh, uh, 100 people that god saying he's going to raise millionaires and i want you to come and sow a seed of a thousand dollars nobody went said right I'm, I'm hearing god i'm hearing god a thousand dollars Oh my God, and then they'll do some tongues. And then they'll be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm hearing now. I, God is saying, if, if, if you don't have a thousand, if you just, just bring 500, 500, quickly, quickly, quickly. They, they try to put a bit of agency to seem like they know what they're doing. To seem it's agent, so it's spiritual. Quickly, 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 quickly. 500 people. Nobody went. I'm hearing hundreds. They are hundred dollars. If you, it's hundred dollars. Quickly, 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 quickly. Nobody went. Up until he said, if, if whatever that you have. <laughs> so are you telling me that God had said, and people never went, and now you're saying whatever it is that you have. Even after he said, whatever you have, nobody went. Why? People's eyes of understanding have been enlightened now. They have been enlightened. The doctrine of Balaam feeds the greed, it feeds you with greed and covetousness to the believers. And it makes believers unstable. You become unstable. So when this is how do you become unstable? Let me let, let me do this and then close. This is how you become unstable. When you are told sow a seed, and then when you give that seed, and then when you, you don't see the money multiplying, you become unstable. You start questioning God. Uh, I, th I think God does not love me. I think God, uh, I don't know, God, does he exist? Ah, uh, God this, ah, uh, God this. You are now unstable. Why? Because of the doctrine of Balaam, covetousness and greed. It makes a believer unstable. Yet the Bible says, if you are unstable, in, you will never, in your ways, you will never receive anything of the Lord. Unstable, you are not sure. God, will God do it? God would, would, would God do it? Would God, you're unstable. The only message you hear nowadays is prosperity. The only message you hear is breakthrough. Year of money. Year of prosperity. You never hear anything to do with repentance. Or the year of Christ. Or anything. No. Year of overtaking you. Overtakers. Ah, you see. The doctrine of, of Balaam. Greed and covetousness. Let's pray right now. Let's pray. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. May God, every overtaker, you're overtaking your overtakers. You're overtaking your doctrine of greed. Balaam. Greed and covetousness. Keys to uncommon money. Ah, <laughs> you. Keys to speed. Year of speed. Year to overtake. Overtake who? Competition. There's too much competition with the body of Christ because of these doctrines. Brothers are competing now. Believers are competing. Pastors competing. Prophets competing. I am the greatest prophet. I am the greatest apostle. I am this. I have this greatest anointing. I have this heavy anointing. I have this nonsense anointing. I have this whatever nonsense. Why? Because of the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of greed and covetousness. But the Bible declares that a time shall come when they shall not endure sound doctrine. They will heap for themselves preachers that will be telling them nonsense. You will make it. Prosperity. You are a millionaire. Receive it. And then when they don't receive it, they are unstable. 
Are we saying don't be... No, no, no. Listen, the Bible told you, if you want to eat, go and work. It did not say soy seed or fast. Many of you are fasting. Yeah, oh, you're fasting. F spending days wherever you say you're going to the mountain. Fasting and praying. <laughs> For what? For money to come. Say money cometh. Money cometh. Money in my pocket. Money in this. Money in my bag. No, listen. Money is out there in the marketplace. Go and get it outside there. <laughs> you think money is just it's going to just you <laughs> leave that thing. Yet believers, yet believers have the riches of Christ. We have the riches of Christ. The gospel is not warfare. It is the power of God unto salvation. So the doctrine of Balaam is the materialistic gospel. That's why believers are full of sorrow and depressed. Believers are full of sorrow and they are depressed. And when they now, these guys, they see now, oh yeah, now these guys are depressed. They are full of sorrow. Guess what do they do? They now bring you comedians in church. Comedians. New Year's Eve, the whole of it, you have comedians. Cracking jokes, cracking and comedians. And they use scripture that laughter is best medicine. <laughs> see, they twist the scripture. Because of the doctrine of Balaam of greed and covetousness, believers are full of sorrow and depression. And after that, ah, they bring you comedians <laughs> to make you laugh. And after you've been laughing, you go home, you're back in your depression. And what? How can a believer be depressed? What happened to the joy of your salvation? Whereby you get your pencil, money or no money, I have joy. I have joy. I have joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The doctrine of Balaam produces competition, greed, and carnality. Greed and carnality. Let me just close with this now. Yeah, let me close. First Timothy. First Timothy chapter 6. Verse number three, first Timothy chapter six, verse number three. Let me close with this one. Teaching and, and edge these things. If anyone teaches a different doctrine, does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teaching that accords with godliness is puffed up with coins and understands nothing. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy and for quarrels about words which produce envy dissension slander evil suspicions and contact constant friction among people who are deprived in mind and deprived of the truth imagining that godliness is a means of gain not being content not being content but godliness with contentment is great gain for we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of it. Now look at verse, verse 19 of, of the same book. No, verse 12 first. It says, fight the good fight of our faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus who is his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession now look at verse Kabado Shalama verse 19 of the same book it says thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of that which is truly life oh Timothy guard the deposit entrusted to you avoid the ir irrelevant Bubbles, contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. For by professing it, some have swayed from the, from the faith. Grace be unto you. The Bible says, run away from vain bubblers, motivational speakers. Sow a seed for your next level. Aya! Yeah, I think let me finish with sow a seed for your next level. That's what you hear. Sow your seed, sow a seed, a sacrificial seed for your next level. Here is a question that I have. Here is a question that I have. Which level are you talking about? 
If you are telling me to sow a seed for my next level, which level, which, which level are you talking about? Because we are set in the highest level. The Bible says we are seated in the heavenly place in Christ Jesus. That is the highest level. So which other level is higher than that? The doctrine of Balaam. Doctrine of greed and covetousness. You will do anything to make it. But the Bible is saying, I have seen what you have gone through. I have seen the pains that you have gone through. I have seen the sufferings that you went through. But it is on Christ, our solid rock where we stand. After all the trials and tribulations came your way, you stood your ground. I commend you. You did not lose your faith, but you have permitted. The only problem I have, you have permitted the doctrine of Balaam in the church. And I, I declare and I decree from today. May you not be manipulated ever again. May you not be deceived ever again. The doctrine of Simon tells you to sow a seed. For you to tap into what grace has provided. It will tell you to sow a seed in, into what the redemptive sacrifice of Christ has provided unto us. Has made available for us. And it has given birth to the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of greed and covetousness, which has made unbelievers to be unstable. I declare and I decree over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you have gone through, that not even anybody knows about. The crying that you have been doing behind closed doors, that nobody knew about. I declare over your life, may God restore you. May God establish you and may God replenish whatever it is that you have lost may your wipe your tears be wiped by the lord god almighty for he said i have given you power to trample upon serpents and scorpions whatever it is that had been been a problem for you whether it was in 2022 whatever mountain that has been before you i'm here to declare and to decree the bible declares as this mountain shall be removed not by your ability but by my spirit saith the lord and that same spirit is within you you have received the spirit of god you have the holy spirit that is resides in you the giver of gifts and the bible declares that this mountain shall be removed by my spirit and where is the spirit the spirit is in you so the ability of you removing every mountain before you it is within you i declare and i decree whatever stubborn mountain that has been standing before you whether it was a mountain of sickness mountain of affliction mountain of disease i come against it by the same spirit that is in you because it says it is not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the lord and the spirit of the lord is in you why because you are the temple of of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit resides in you. The giver of gifts. Whatever gifts that you have been trusted. Oh my God. Jalamando. I declare right now. For everybody that is watching. Whatever gifts that you have been trusting God for. I'm here to announce those gifts are in you. But I'm here to activate them in the name of Jesus. Like Paul would say. I pray that I come and impart upon you. That word impartation. It was to activate that which already you have. Because it is the Holy Spirit that gives the gifts. I declare and I decree. Whatever it is the gifts that you have been trusting God for. That are in you already. Ready, may they be activated. May the gift of working of miracles be activated. May the gift of healing be activated. May the gift of interpretation be activated. May the gift of discernment be activated. May the gift of prophecy be activated in you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare and I decree. That you are the head, you are not the tail. You are above, you are not beneath. You are who God says you are. You have what God says you have. You can do what God says you can do. I declare and I decree this year, 2023, your eyes of understanding being enlightened. That you will come to the knowledge of truth. You will not be deceived ever again. You will not be sowing seeds of what the redemptive sacrifice of Christ has brought, has provided for us in this season. You will not. I declare and I decree. Anything that has not been working for you, may it begin to work for you. Why? Because you are acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. And when you acknowledge every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus, your faith becomes effectual. Your faith becomes effective. I declare and I decree. In this season... In this season, in this season, 
may your eyes of understanding be enlightened. May you walk in perfect health in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that was not working before, may it begin to work for you in, in the name of Jesus. Whatever or wherever you have been denied access before, I declare and I decree by the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, the same spirit that is in you, may that same spirit be made manifest in the marketplace, in every of your endeavors. I declare it so in the name of Jesus. My beloved, you are blessed. You are not cursed. And you cannot be cursed. I declare it in the name of Jesus. 2023, may this be a year that your eyes of understanding be enlightened. May this be a year that you, you hunger more for the word of God. May you dwell more in, 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 in the knowledge of Christ. May you dwell more in the word of God that you may grow. May this be a year that you will grow in the name of Jesus. And as you grow, you can never be manipulated. My beloved, from me, it is shalom. You are blessed and you are loved. And I declare and I decree that this is your year that your eyes of understanding being enlightened. Oh, praise God. I just want to thank you. I'm seeing my brother, big brother here uh, is watching and uh, it's just it's just amazing. You know, Eddie, it is good to see you. Gail, it is good to see you. Prince Joseph, it is good to see you. Joanne, it is good to see you. Cynthia, it is good. My beloved, I could I could spend the rest of the day just acknowledging you all, but I just want to let you know that I love you so dearly. How do I know that I love you? I love you so much. That's the reason why I give you the truth. Praise God. If I did not love you, I would not tell you the truth, but because I love you so much and I am an ambassador of Yeshua 